Watch you guys got another video here for you on how to make a free Minecraft server for you and your friends to play on in a secure environment. So let me go ahead and show you a quick way of setting this up and it's really easy to do and I'll show you step by step on how to do this. Now DigitalOcean have a free $100 gift card at the moment which you can use. Now that means you can have a free uh, Minecraft server set up and use that $100 credit and then cancel at the end of it if you wish. Now let's take a look at how we can set this up. Now first off you're going to need a couple of criteria. You're going to need to have a new account set up with DigitalOcean and you'll also get $100 credit to that account and also you need to use all of that credit in 60 days which is two months which means you can have a full-blown uh, Minecraft server for two months uh, for DigitalOcean and then cancel afterwards if you wish. So I've got an account set up here and I'm going to show you how to do it. So first off, you're going to get something like this. What you need to do here is go down to the marketplace and click on marketplace here once you've got your account set up. And this will take you to this window here. You can set up a free website or whatever it is you want to do, but we're going to be doing Minecraft here. So let's just do Minecraft here and type that in here. And you'll see two options available. We're going to be doing the Minecraft Java Edition server here. Click on this one and this will take you to this page here. Now the Minecraft Java server that they're running at the moment is 1.15.2. So you need to make sure you use that version of client, otherwise it won't work. Click on create Minecraft Java Edition server droplet, uh, the big blue button here. Click on this one. And this will then get the droplet ready for us. So now you can see here, there it is right there. And you can see we've got the shared CPU basic setting on there. That's what we've got set up here. Next up, we're going to leave the CPU options to premium AMD with NVMe SSD. Now, if you want to use the free $100 version, use the $48 a month. That means that two months of that will give you eight gigabytes. That's four AMD CPUs, 160 gigabytes NVMe SSD storage with five terabytes of transfer and that is for $48 a month. So remember, we're using the $100 free plan here, so we can use the $48 a month one. Now, if you're paying for it, you will need to have a minimum of, say, two gigabytes here for the vanilla version, which means no mods or anything like that. If you do want to add some mods on here and other bits and pieces, you will need to have at least the $24 a month package, which is about four gigabytes two AMD CPUs, 80 gigabyte NVMe SSD, and four terabytes of transfer rate. But that's basically what you need there. But this one here would be okay for, you know, just you and your friends, uh, just for a vanilla pack, no mods and stuff. So if you're using the $300 version, $48 a month will be fine. I'm going to go for the $24 a month because I'm already a, a customer and I can't use the $300 version because I've already... Uh, signed up with their account to use it before so I'm going to use this version here next up you need to choose your uh, data center near you mine is going to be in the UK so I'm going to be doing London but if you're in another country you can choose one of those versions there you can select additional options if you wish I'm leaving those off now authentication this is really important because this is for security and stuff like that you can use a password it's very easy to set up, but the problem is they're very easy to hack and you don't really want that. So you want to use the SSH keys. Let me show you how to set up an SSH key for this. So click on the new SSH key. It's very simple and easy to do. This will open up a box like this one, which says put in your SSHD key content. Where can you get that from? Let me quickly show you how to uh, do this. So we're on a Windows based system. If you're on a Linux or a Mac, it's going to be slightly different for you, but this is for a Windows 10 system here. So first, we need to make sure that we have SSH uh, client installed. So go to settings here and go to apps. Then go to apps and features. And then in here, you'll see additional features. Click on this one here. And what we're looking for here is open SSH client. If that's installed, you're good to go. If it's not installed, you will need to install that on your system, but it should be installed on there, as you can see here. 
Okay, so now we've got that on. So let's go down to the search box and we can type in here CMD. And we're going to run this as administrator. So let me quickly type this in here and run as administrator. There we go. That will open up the command prompt box like so. Now we need to put in this command here and this will open up our SSH for us. So go SSH dash and we're going to put keygen, push enter. And you can see it's generating a public private RSA key pair. So just see this here, it's going to enter it in that location. So push enter and now enter a phrase and it's going to also uh, empty for no phrase, but you can put one in here. I'm just going to enter again. And then we're going to enter the same uh, passphrase again. And this will give us our fingerprint is here. This is our fingerprint key. You can see here, and it's going to put that into the users. It's me, which is my account. So let me just show you where that's located and you can then check yours out as well. So go to Explorer here, go into your C drive and then users go into there and then into your user account. And you should see .ssh inside here, click in there and you'll see two files. It's the .pub one, which is the one that we're going to use. This is for public. You can right click on this and open this up in notepad. And let me just go ahead and do that and show you. So I'm going to right click open with notepad and this will open up our SSH here key. And you can see it here, I've blurred some of it out, but basically that's our key. Now we need to copy this uh, key and we're going to use that on a digital ocean website here. So let me go ahead and go back over to there and paste it in that add public SSH key it needs to be the public one. Make sure that you've got that in there. And you can see here, I can give it a name. So I'm just going to call this my SSH or something like that. There we go. And we can add this SSH key. And you should see a little green tick there. And that's all now done. That's nice and secure, much better than the password method. So let's move on down to the next section. And we're going to finalize and create our droplet or our server, you can see choose a host name. We don't want to use a big name like that. So let's give ourselves a little bit more easier name to remember. You can call yours whatever you like. I'm just going to call this something simple. Let's just call this a, let's see, Brightech. And we can call this a My, Minecraft. And we can call that, there we go, that'll do. So that'll do. So Brightech Minecraft, that'll do. So next up, what you need to do here now is come down a little bit further. And we should now see enable backups. We're not going to be worrying about that. We're going to create the droplet this time. And this will take a bit of time. So be patient. I've sped that part up. You should see an IP address there. I've blurred that out. Now, if you want a bit more added security, so you don't have to give out the IP and things like that, you can create a domain, um, which is a, a DNS or digital ocean uh, domain, which would be a much more easier for you to remember. So go into where it says uh, manage DNS on digital ocean, click on this here and you can add in a domain here. So let's go ahead and do this one and put in a domain. Now yours can be whatever you like. I'm just going to call this brightech.cloud or something like that. There we go. That'll do. And you can then add this to your account. And this basically means that when you set up your server, you just can add that in. So we're going to also create this here and give this a direct to and make sure that's our server. So I'm just going to click on my server here and then create a record of that. So it's going to be called that. That's good. And once we've got this done, you can see now we're all in position. We're ready to go. And our domain is called brightech.cloud and we can connect to this on our Minecraft server. First, we're going to need to download Minecraft. So go to Minecraft. I'm going to use computer here, PC, click on this one. But if you're using Mac or Linux, you can use the one of those. Make sure you click on the Minecraft Java edition because that's the edition our server is running. And of course, it's not free. It's £17.95, but I'm going to go ahead and buy this just for the tutorial so I can show you. I don't really play Minecraft, but I wanted to show you how to set it up. Now, there is a version here of 1.17.1, 1. 
which is not compatible with the server that we're running at the moment. So until they update that, we need to use an older version here. So go into here and we're going to choose the 1.15.2. That is the older Minecraft server. Now they'll probably update this at some point, but they haven't updated it yet. I have sent them an email to say they are using an older version. It needs to be updated. So that's now done. And we can now browse to a, a game directory. You can put it wherever you like. I'm going to keep this separate from the very new version uh, so we can always alternate go from each one to the other. So I'm going to go here and go into my computer here and select a, maybe another drive or something like that. I'll put it onto just to make sure it doesn't conflict with the other one. So let's just put it inside here. Create a new folder. I'm going to call this version 1.14. That should be uh, actually version 1.15.2, but I'll leave it like that. That'll do. Okay, let's just click on there. And the resolution is for your monitor. You can set this up. I'm just going to quickly give this 1920 by 1080. You can leave it on auto if you wish. Click create. And you should see an older version there and the latest version. So click on play. It says you're about to play a version of a Minecraft Java edition that does not support the latest players. That's okay. We're going to accept that. And that's going to download that version to that location where we put it. So it doesn't conflict with our latest release. And once that's done, it will open up and finalize. And we can then go ahead and put in our server details, which we just created on DigitalOcean, and play on our server and invite our friends. So to do that, what we need to do is go to multiplayer. So click on multiplayer. So I'm going to click proceed here click proceed there we go and we can add a server so click add server i'm going to put in my server details and away we go and it's night time great so what i'm going to do here is let this get to daylight i'll quickly fall fast forward this to daytime and there we go we're on the server the server we just created on digital ocean and you get two months of free play you can play that with all your friends give them your domain name that you've set up and basically let them connect to it and you can have loads of fun on there with all your friends and that's it after two months you can cancel it anyway my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk a big shout out to all my youtube members who have joined my youtube members group i really do appreciate the support thanks again for watching and i shall see you again for another video real soon drop on our discord server for a chat if you wish bye for now